comes the other option, which is called neuromodulation, which I love. The most common neuromodulation technique in epilepsy we use, uh, vagal nerve stimulation or VNS. Fellow Homo sapiens, Today, we hear from the wonderful pediatric neurologist Ezra Sarandoglu from Turkey, who tells us about the exciting treatment for some epilepsies called VNS, or vagal nerve stimulation. Ezra speaks of the simple surgery, potential side effects, and incredibly positive impacts that so many children experience when it comes to their seizure control and even mood. Ezra also tells us about her research into the impact of VNS on children when it comes to sleep, appetite and overall quality of life. My name is Ezra Sardaroğlu. I'm a pediatric neurologist and a PhD in medical biology based in Ankara, Turkey. I work at Gazi University right now. Uh, I'm interested in epilepsy and movement disorders. Uh, I also uh, take part in uh, the future leaders of International Child Neurology Association. I'm the chair of FLICNA and also work in Young EPNS Group, European Pediatric Neurology Society. Uh, and we are trying to build international collaboration of young representatives of different child neurology associations. So I'm the biggest fan of collaboration and uh, multi-center studies. I'm a huge fan as well. And the more international, the better, I think. It becomes more exciting and also gives us greater insight into people from different backgrounds and, you know, different genomic uh, backgrounds as well, which I think can be really, really important. Could you tell us a bit more about your uh, well, the work with the children, um, the, your, your children, your, your patients, basically, your children um, who have refractory epilepsy and how you might help them with VNS. Yes, you know, epilepsy is quite common around the world and also affecting children. And around 30% of children do not respond well to oral anti-seizure -medi anti medications. So then comes a choice for... Uh, epilepsy surgery, but not every person with epilepsy are uh, good candidates for epilepsy surgery. Then comes the other option, which is called neuromodulation, which I love. Uh, the most common neuromodulation technique in epilepsy we use uh, vagal nerve stimulation or VNS, as we call it. What, what's, why are you a huge fan of that? Because uh, I believe the brain to be an electric electricity device, so uh, more than pharmacological agents, I think we can achieve with uh, electricity modulating devices like deep brain stimulation in dystonia and VNS in epilepsy. Tell us how frequently are you using um, VNS with patients? What type of children are they, apart from obviously having refractory epilepsy, do they vary in other ways as well? Like they have um, lots of comorbidities or what? The children are um, going through a lot of uh, protocols like epilepsy surgery. They are going through video EEG monitoring, MRI and different imaging techniques. Uh, and when we decide that they're not available for epilepsy surgery, we think about vagal nerve stimulation. Uh, it is uh, kind of easier to do. It, it is uh, appropriate for children over four years of age, in some countries even two years of age. Uh, and uh, it only has contraindications when the patient has a, a very severe asthma, very um, difficulty in breathing. Other than that, it is safe. Could you tell everybody who's not familiar and people who, who are listening who haven't heard of VNS before exactly what it is? Because I, I have a friend, for instance, who's got VNS and a cool scar around here somewhere. And yeah, it affects their voice sometimes. And yeah, it makes sense what you're saying about asthma because sometimes it's a, it affects his breath just a little bit. Could you just tell everybody a little bit about VNS and what it is, please? It's a device uh, designed to change how brain cells work by giving electrical stimulation to them. So it consists of a uh, pulse generator implanted uh, on your chest, left side of the chest, below the clavicle. And it has LEDs uh, that connect with the vagus nerve, a nerve in your neck. Uh, vagus nerve is our 10th cranial nerve and it uh, connects the brain with the internal organs. It carries information both from the brain to the organs and from the organs to the brain. Uh, 
so we are using the vagus nerve in the neck uh, as a way uh, to um, transfer our electrical stimulation to the brain areas. Because it's like, isn't it linked up to sort of a thing that you can press to kind of zap the part of your brain to which the vagus nerve is connected, like towards the back of your brain, is that right? Uh, well, the vagus nerve affects uh, brain stem and also other parts of the brain. Uh, and in the end, it does change uh, how our uh, neurotransmitters work. So there are some substances in our brain uh, that have effect on seizure production. So they increase uh, the inhibitory uh, neurotransmitters and decrease the excitatory transmitters. And also it changes cerebral blood flow to certain areas of the brain. It even affects the EEG uh, to stop the seizures from coming. That's so cool. I mean, I think it's important to say it doesn't work 100% for every person, right? And it's not just because a person is not suitable for, say, direct brain surgery, it doesn't necessarily mean that they're also suitable for VNS. Yes, you're right. It is an add-on therapy. It's not a cure for epilepsy, unfortunately. And as you know, nothing's a miracle in treatment and especially in neurology. So we should think of it as an add-on medication. Uh, but uh, what is better than a medication is, uh, after some time, a medication use causes tolerance. So it does not um, show the effect that it used to show. But for uh, stimulation, uh, neuromodulation procedures, the effect gets better and better with time. That's so cool. I've even um, read, uh, I think it was, I don't know if it was an article or a paper about some people actually benefiting psychologically from VNS, like it can improve mood in some people. Yes, it is quite right. And uh, I'm surprised that you know that because it's not very common knowledge. Uh, I read I read too much. <laughs> Anything to do with epilepsy, I'll read yeah. it. <laughs> You're a very informative person. <laughs> well, apart from decreasing the seizure frequency and seizure severity, uh, we found out that uh, VNS helps the quality of life a lot in patients, more than the effect on the seizures. And it is because it increases alertness, it increases the cognition, uh, it helps with speech problems, mood changes, uh, the overall quality of life gets better. With every patient, I'm presume it's not assured it's not going to be every patient i'm talking very excitedly but of course yeah, i can feel it i know i'm feeling it through the screen i love it <laughs> i'm sorry but no it doesn't help in every patient um I, we see its first effects in four to six months um so it's a bit time uh, lag so we uh, continue taking the medications and around 40-50% uh, of people respond in these first six months, but then it goes up to 70% uh, with five to ten years. And it's not um, like a hugely, hugely invasive operation, is it? Because it doesn't take that long. You compare it to a resection, it's like slicing, you know, God, that's a horrible word. <laughs> but just like chopping a little bit in there, <laughs> zapping it together and boom, that's, you yeah. know, so minimal risk, I guess. Adverse effects of the procedure is not very much. Uh, it's a one or two hour procedure uh, on the neck and, you know, uh, below the clavicle. Uh, maybe uh, there could be some infections, uh, hemorrhages uh, or vocal cord uh, complications but that's around one or two percent so it's not a very big brain uh, neurosurgery and so tell us just briefly about your study which is ongoing into vns and the impact of the procedure on people's lives our group previously done some research on long-term benefits of vns that we talked and they've also looked at the heart rate variability with vns uh, because the vagus nerve is closely linked with heart and uh, they've shown that after two years uh, there's not a harmful effect to the heart and now uh, what we are working on uh, are two different studies one of them uh, involves um, a major side effect of VNS uh, at first is hoarseness and this um, 
feeling in the throat. Yeah, like there's something stuck. Like I've, I've heard a few people with that. They're like, uh, uh, yeah. Exactly. And it is uh, usually resolving with time and it's closely linked with stimulation. So we can change the stimulation uh, to decrease that side effect. But we, uh, this also may have effect in swallowing. So we are looking for uh, a long-term uh, follow-up study for uh, swallowing, hoarseness, uh, dysphagia, difficulty in swallowing, uh, and also appetite. Uh, we are trying to see if um, this procedure changes something in their appetite uh, because uh, it's um, usually an overlooked part of quality of life, but appetite is very important in children. Uh, especially in countries like mine, where we are very proud to feed our children. <laughs> I wasn't going to say anything, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Food is quite an important part of life, you know, keeping your kid alive. Or well, does it tend to, what, what are you seeing so far? Is it, does the research indicate that potentially it can decrease appetite or increase appetite? Or Well, it seems that it decreases appetite a bit. Uh, and we're trying to see its relation with these stimulation parameters. And when are you going to have full proper results? Proper results, but you know, when, when will this, this study finish? Yeah, I think it will take a year or so. Okay. okay. And also we are trying to see uh, the differences VNS makes uh, to the patient's sleep patterns and sleep quality. Which is really important because it plays such a huge part in the lives of people, well, every person, but especially us affected by the epilepsies. Seizures and epilepsy affect sleep. Um, other comorbidities like uh, depression, anxiety or having a, a seizure affect sleep. But also VNS affects sleep too, uh, in both good and bad ways. Uh, for example, it may cause some sleep apnea uh, in some patients uh, and it may have uh, some different effects. So we are doing both surveys that the child and the caregivers can answer and also we are doing polysomnography which is a quantitative analysis of EEG and uh, sleep patterns. Uh, so we are trying to see what VNS does to the sleep. Yeah, again, kind of an important thing for us, especially as, you know, lack of quality sleep can incur seizures. Anybody wants to learn more about you, your work and your study, I will put the links to your profiles beneath um, the recording. Please check Ezra out, everybody. She's done some amazing things. Also worked over here in the UK. And as previously mentioned, works with heaps of um, fellow clinicians, researchers and organisations around the world. So it's very cool stuff. So thank you so much for joining us, Ezra. It's been a joy to have you. Thank you Tori very much. And uh, I would also like to uh, announce that we are having uh, the International Child Neurology Association Congress in October in Turkey. So uh, I'm also, uh, uh, you know, want to see everybody interested in child neurology in Turkey as well in October. To learn more about Ezra, make sure that you check her out at toryrobinson.com slash epilepsy hyphen sparks hyphen insights, where you can find links to her work. And if you haven't already, do make sure that you subscribe to the channel to receive weekly episodes featuring some of the world's leading epilepsy specialists and researchers.